Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to get started in about a minute. Uh, just to give everyone a heads up, this is for the bookworms reading curriculum. So if you are a gifted parent, there is a separate link for you that you should be able to find in your email. All right, everyone, I want to welcome you to reading night um, for Claymont Elementary. We are here to talk about our bookworms curriculum. Uh, my name is Rebecca Slumbach and I am one of the fourth grade education teachers. Felicia Wooten. I'm a fourth grade um, regular regular education teacher. And I am Kelly Dowd. I am the first grade English teacher for um, our Spanish immersion program. Hi, Giselle. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Dana Joffrey, and I am one of the reading specialists here at Claymont Elementary. Hey, I'm Kristen Cook, and I'm the other reading specialist at Claim. And I am, I am Jody Engelman, and I am another fourth grade regular education teacher at Claim. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. I just want to remind you, this is for bookworms. So if you are a gifted parent or your child program at Claymont in grades four or five, um, it is a separate um, link. Uh, so to get started, we just are so excited to talk about our reading curriculum. Uh, we believe modeling reading is so important with your children. So making sure that you're visiting the local library, um, some other things that you can do at home with your children are search articles online together of things that possibly interest them. Um, our students have access to Sora and Epic. Uh, most of the homeroom teachers or the reading specialists have provided Epic codes for them. Uh, we encourage your child to find books that interest them when they go to library once a week and making sure that when they come home that you're, uh, you know, they're reading their books and keeping them active, actively involved in reading. Um, another great tip is to uh, eat, read to your child each night. So our goals for tonight, Bookworms edition, um, we're going to talk about shared reading. We're going to talk about another part of our curriculum, which we call ELA. Our reading specialist will talk about reading DI, which is differentiated instruction. And then at the end, we will have an opportunity for questions and answers. All right, everybody, I'm gonna get started with um, shared reading for grades K to two. Um, you'll see across all grade levels that our number one goal for the bookworms curriculum is to foster a love of reading and writing. And one of the awesome ways that they do that is by using real books. So as Ms. Limbach was sharing, when the kids go to the library, they can actually buy the books or, or not buy, um, check out the books that we're reading in the classroom. So um, in kindergarten, they do lots of read alouds. Um, they have uh, one of theirs is Biscuit Loves the Library. Um, in first grade, we do lots of the I Can Read series like Danny and the Dinosaur. And um, in second grade, they read a lot of like Henry and Mudge and things like that. So it's well-known titles um, that's really exciting for the kids to actually see books that they recognize and they may already have at home. Um, so kindergarten looks a little bit different. Um, there are four components. Um, the dialogic, which is a teacher read aloud. Um, it's focused on oral language. Um, so Biscuit Loves the Library is an example of one of the kindergarten dialogic read alouds. Um, there's lots of visual supports and the teacher stops frequently for comprehension questions. They focus on WH questions like who, what, when, and where. Um, there's also a focus on phonological awareness. 
Um, so they teach sound skills. They start with um, oral language, so rhyming words, syllables, and things like that. Um, and one of the ways that they teach this is through poems. So they'll focus on poems and they also have lots of visuals to go with their poems. Um, their word, the word study portion of the kindergarten lesson focuses on initial sounds and letters. So they learn their ABCs, um, they learn the sounds and the letters and they focus on picture sorts. And you'll see what a kindergarten classroom looks like on the next slide. Um, the last concept is oh, print concepts, and that um, helps build foundational skills of reading. So the teacher models tracking print. So we read from left to right, and we use our pointer finger to um, tap the words and read them as we go. So this is an example of what shared reading looks like in the kindergarten classroom. So um, the first slide, you see some things about grandpa. That is um, one of their beginning of the year dialogic um, teacher read alouds. And you can see that there are lots and lots of visuals with the um, with like the eyeballs and the watch and everything like that. Um, then they move on to their um, phonological awareness through poems. So one of the poems that they're currently reading is Andy, Sandy, Jackie, Dandy. Um, and the kids can memorize them. They can work with um, the anchor charts and follow along with their pointer fingers. So it's a lot of teacher modeling and visuals and um, basic foundational skills that they focus on in kindergarten. So moving on to what shared reading looks like in first and second grade. So it builds off the foundational skills that they have made in kindergarten. So we start our lesson with word study. And in first grade, we start with initial sounds. And then we move on to word families. Um, during our word study portion, we also focus on high frequency words. We use the Fry sight word list. Um, in first grade, we have a dictated sentence. So um, the teacher will start by modeling um, the sentence. So my sentence might be, I see Sam for the first week of school. And um, the teacher models the sentence and then the kids practice writing that, that sentence on their own. And that's really good for um, applying the words and sounds that they're learning about. Um, during that week, they can um, apply those skills to writing their dictated sentence. And um, and then when we get into our, our books, so after the word study portion there, and that's what word study looks like, thank you. You can, yeah. Um, so in first grade, you'll see that we start with initial sounds and we use picture sorts. Um, and then moving on into second grade, um, you'll see it gets a little bit more intense. So each year builds on the um, skills that they learned previously. Um, so you'll see in second grade, they have short vowels and long vowels um, and also are controlled. You can go back to the other slide, Rebecca. Um, and then um, the next portion of the shared reading lesson is the oral reading of the books. So um, those are the books that I had shared earlier. We use um, lots of series like Biscuit and Danny and the Dinosaur. Um, and Henry and Mudge. And it's really awesome because the kids get to read, um, they get their own copy of the book and um, they engage in different types of reading. So we might start with echo reading where all the teacher reads a page and models how that reading goes and then the kids will read back. And that's the most basic way we start reading. Um, in first grade, it's easy for the kids to memorize um, and it really helps build their reading fluency. Um, and by the end of the week, they get really confident. And moving on after echo reading, we move on to choral reading. So that's all together. So you'll see a lot um, throughout Bookworms. It's a lot of I do, the teacher models. We do, we do it all together. And then the kids do it on their own. So after choral reading, they might do a partner reading at the end of the week. 
And that's when they're taking turns and reading page by page with a partner. And like I said, this really helps build their reading fluency and, um, and, and boost their confidence because by the end of the week, they're like, wow, I can read this whole book. And it's an actual book that I can find at the library. So um, that's one of the great things about shared reading in first and second grade. After, um, after reading, we have a comprehension discussion. And during that part of the lesson, the students are practicing story mapping. There's an anchor chart um, that has the basic components of a story, so character, setting, and sequence of events. Um, we also practice text-based responses. So um, we'll ask questions and they'll actually have to find the answer in the text. Um, and then after our comprehension discussion, we have a written response. Students have a workbook and they can respond to various types of prompts um, about what we're reading. Um, in first grade, we have sentence frames, um, but you'll see that in second grade, um, they move on. So first grade, there's a little bit more support. And then second grade, you'll see those um, supports removed. So the first picture is an example of a first grade written response. Um, the prompt is think about what could happen if there was a puppy in our classroom. Describe what would happen and finish the sentence. So they give the sentence frame, a puppy came in and, and then the students would have to fill in the blank and draw their picture. Um, in first grade, it gives them lots of different ways to respond so they can draw a picture. Um, they have the support of the sentence frame and they can also go beyond that and um, write additional details and sentences on their own. Um, the second grade prompt, um, says reread pages four to nine. So it actually asks them to go back in the book and then write a list of the new information you learned. So in this written response, they're asked to write, actually write a list of things. So they have different types of activities and responses that they require from um, students. And you can see that there's also a rubric. So first grade and second grade, it looks really similar. Um, we first think about does the answer make sense? Is the answer plausible? And then we go from there. And both in first grade and second grade, um, to get a three or a four, they need to um, refer back to important details in the text. So that's how we um, that's how we assess kind of their reading, comp uh, their understanding of the story and their comprehension in first and second grade. Thank you. So very similarly for grades three through five, we also have uh, pretty hefty, chunky read alouds. Uh, these are some examples of some books that we are reading. So in fourth grade, we read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Third grade reads Because of When Dixie. And fourth grade starts the year off with um, Walk to Moons. So in third through fifth grade, days one through three, students are receiving two vocabulary words a day with syllable instruction. Each week they should receive about six vocabulary words for the week. I know sometimes in third grade that can vary, but for the most part, it's six vocab words for the week. Each day we set a focus for reading and then teacher the reads aloud while students are reading in that whisper voice in that same kind of chor choral format that we heard about in that first and second grade classroom. Uh, we then go into a comprehension discussion as a class where students then go and complete that anchor chart. And then afterwards they would go and complete those written responses and super sentences and we'll talk about them on the next couple slides. Days four through five in the curriculum look a little bit different. For days four and five, there are no new vocabulary words. So students are practicing their words that they have inside their book. And then on day five, we do the word study assessments where students are writing the word and creating super sentences. The number of super sentences can vary, but we are looking then to assess their ability on, did they understand what the word meant in a complex compound sentence? So you'll see here is an example of what a vocabulary list would look like. This is a grade four example. So they're sent home with the word, what type of word it is, the definition, where the text, um, where the word is located in the text that they are reading to help build that fluency and comprehension of what the word means. 
And then there are pictures also associated with it. Uh, when I talked about the syllable instruction for um, how we are teaching it, we are breaking it down into these, uh, you know, different syllable parts and using um, some picture support for the students um, inside the classroom as well. So if we're looking at like the word precious, you can see how it's broken down. Um, and we talk about what type of syllable they are during um, our beginning of class. With those words, students are expected to go and do some super sentences that each day they're expected to create two after the reading and it's based on the reading from the day so that we can see their comprehension abilities from what we read. So you'll see an example here. This is a fourth grade example for the word pander. So you'll see how the student went through and filled out five of the six boxes about the characters and the setting from where this sentence was read inside the story. And then they go and build a complete sentence, which then um, the teacher provides feedback for them. So the super sentences are working on the who and the what of the sentence, as well as that how, why, um, and where. So students can receive supports like this to help build their ability to have that super complex sentence. Um, we know that a simple sentence has the noun and the verb, um, and then helping them, you know, build each part on each, um, you know, throughout the week if they need to have that kind of instructional support, or if they're already there, then just keep encouraging them to keep building in those six pieces. We work on really expanding their predicates. So the where, the when, the why, the how, and having these supports for students of, you know, when we say where, these are some words that we might use. When we are, you know, thinking about a when, we might use examples like this, or a why, or a how. The next piece in our curriculum is the written response. So each day we read, a chapter or so in a book, and then they are expected to go in their um, workbooks or in Schoology and respond to the text. So we have a couple different examples here. So you'll see that sometimes it might be as simple as using a two column chart to make a list of positive and negative things about Owen and Joseph's idea to fish for profit. Uh, you might see an example of us writing a letter. So students might reread Willy Wonka's letter and then write a, a letter back to him um, from Charlie, thinking about uh, thanking him for the opportunities. And we're looking that students are able to change their point of view in writing. And then for fifth grade, an example is what do you think hope was at the bottom of Pandora's box? So having them kind of apply some inferencing skills. There are three components in our Eng English language arts portion of the program. Um, we have our interactive read alouds. The teacher reads aloud and discusses a text with the students to build their vocabulary and their comprehension. Um, we have grammar lessons. The students are taught the standards aligned grammar instruction through teacher modeling, which will in turn translate into writing sentences, paragraphs, and stories. Um, then we have our genre-based genre, genre, genre writing lessons where the students are taught three types of genre, genre I can never say that wrong, genre, genre, genre <laughs> writing, such as narrative opinion and inform, information. Students use the writing process and use checklists to make their writing more rich. Students are, um, they also collaborate with their peers and their teacher to improve their writing. Um, we have a video here that we're gonna show you um, where we do some interactive read alouds. It says that they're tasting batter. Do you know what batter is? Batter is ingredients. Batter is part of the ingredients to make what? Cake. The cake, right. Why do we think Elizabeth keeps doing what her mom is doing? What do you think? Mooney? Because she wants to learn how to take care of babies. What do you do with a nose like this? 
Which animals do you think these noses belong to? So that's an example of um, our read alouds. These are some of the read alouds that we have in our lower grades, um, caps for sale. Um, and then we have the BFG and freedom on the menu is our fourth grade read aloud that we, we um, read to the teachers. And it looks just like um, you just saw on the video. We read the book aloud to them and we ask them questions. All right. And then we move on to our sentence grammar where the students practice unscrambling, imitating and expanding on sentences. This is a, an example from a grade two um, from the book, Alexander, Who Used to Be Rich Last Sunday by Judith Byers. Um, you, exp you expand on the sentence, we read the sentence, I got more gum and what we do is we at, we have them to add more detail. One thing that they can add is what kind of gum it is. Um, if I'm going to add a descriptive word to, that tells what kind of gum it is, you know, I need an adjective. An adjective adds the information about the noun and the gum is a noun. I'm going to add sugarless or write other adjectives that they could, that they could add to um, the sentence. Um, then we have, what if we wanted to tell the brand of the, the gum? You can tell the brand of the gum, like what type of brand it is, like Juicy Fruit or Double Men or something like that, or sugarless um, type of gum. They have to be capitalized and they can, they can add the brand names. And um, you could also tell, tell where you got it um, from. I can add a phrase that tells where, where to the beginning or the end of the sentence. Okay. okay, so the other part of um, our ELA instruction is the writing portion. And in kindergarten, that looks like learning how to write a sentence. So we talk about how a complete sentence is a subject and a predicate. So we tell who, and that's the subject, who or what, and then what is happening. Um, and we put that together to make a sentence. So in kindergarten, it might just look like copying and pasting the two pieces together and learning what a complete sentence looks like. Um, then as the year progresses and they learn how to actually write one sentence um, and they might respond to a narrative opinion or informative prompt. So it might, a narrative prompt in kindergarten might just be something like tell somewhere you went this weekend and for them to be able to report back, I went to the mall. Um, or opinion, which book is your favorite book? My favorite book is blank. So it might be something very simple as, as just writing one sentence. And then as the year goes on, and as we move into first and second grade, we really start um, hitting the ground running with our writing. So, um, oh, so, so um, one of the things, that we use a lot is checklists. Um, and you can see a kindergarten example over here. Um, and it's something as simple as just stating the topic um, and telling about telling one thing about the topic. Um, in first grade, uh, in kindergarten, they expect one to two. In first grade, we expect two to four. And then as you can see, as we move into second grade, you know, the checklist gets to be um, a little bit more intense. So they're expected to have a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Um, and students are able to use these checklists in a lot of different ways. They can use it to check their own work. They can use it when they're peer reviewing. Um, and so it's really something that they can use in the classroom um, as they work through the writing process. And so you might see a lot of these coming home staple to your kids, your children's writing. Um, so look out for that. And then, oh, yep. go I ahead, Rebecca. As, I was gonna say, as soon as we get into uh, grades three for, through five is when we're really using this part of our curriculum to write our five paragraph essays. Um, I know we're writing like compare and contrast essays and mystery narratives. And so students are really having an opportunity to then come to what we see in this grade five opinion checklist and build, you know, five 
or more paragraphs um, on some prompt similar to um, what Kelly was saying uh, as the younger grades are or in response to uh, maybe a novel that they connect it with in their shared part of their class. Thank you to all of our colleagues who have um, shared with the core curriculum for reading. I and Mrs. Joffrey will be discussing the differentiated instruction block and what that looks like. So a lot of the students in a couple of weeks will begin DI time. It actually begins on Monday, October 18th. And what DI time stands for is the differentiated instruction block. This merely means that the, all students will receive small group instruction at their skill level, and they will be with either a teacher or an academic tutor. Um, the students could also be with a reading specialist for more intensive support or a small group with their classroom teacher for more intensive support. During this time, about once a week, they will also have a chance to um, work independently with their writing with their small group, or they um, will be doing small group at their small independent writing groups at their desk. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, we engage in a framework for providing support to all students. And this framework is called MTSS. It stands for the Multi-Tiered System of Support. So all students here at Claymont Elementary School and across the Brandywine School District are screened with reading. And what that merely means is that they're giving a reading assessment. And based on the assessment results, we collect the data, we analyze that data, and then we determine what would be the best way for that student to learn reading. Um, during their small groups, they are placed in a skill level group. And Mrs. Joffrey will be talking about that on the next slide. And in their skill level groups, they do, um, they, students are progress monitored either on a weekly basis, a biweekly basis, or approximately every six weeks. And that merely determines what, if the group that they're in is the best fit for that student, or do they need to repeat the group, or do they need to be placed somewhere else? So we are monitoring their progress just to see what is the best fit for that student, how best can we get them to be a lifelong learner for reading. And this also helps us problem solve any students that may be complex in regards to hmm, the data that we're collecting differs in multiple ways. So we just engage in problem solving strategies as a team to determine what is best for your child. All right, so the model that we use to determine um, the targeted instruction is called the staircase to proficiency. So what's our ultimate goal for our students when it comes to reading? We want them to understand what they're reading or comprehend. So you'll see that's the top step. Um, so we're making the shift uh, from really learning to read to reading to learn. Um, and we can't do that until we have the foundation built. So, Using all the data we collect from our beginning of the year screening assessments and diagnostic assessments, um, we determine what area of support every student needs in regards to their reading instruction. Um, at the bottom of the staircase, you'll see is phonical, phonological awareness and word recognition. So students who are working on their letter sounds and letter names, um, just starting to use their sounds to blend and read words um, and also reading high frequency words. And then once they have that skill um, solid and the foundation is built there, they can move on to starting to read words um, with short and long vowel patterns um, and becoming automatic in that. So our goal is accuracy and then become automatic so quickly, and then we can move on to fluency. Um, and once we work with fluency, they're reading texts at their grade level. So all students have access to their grade level text. Um, so once we start working on fluency, we start to build in the comprehension. Once we see that they're fluent readers and meeting those grade level benchmarks in fluency, then we can start to target um, vocabulary and um, more comprehension, digging more into the book and more comprehension strategies. So during the DI block, 
really every student is getting what they need, basically, whether it's in a small group with their classroom teacher or like Mrs. Cook said, be, they might be working with a reading specialist or one of our academic tutors. Um, and then if you're at, you know, if you're ever wondering where your child falls on this staircase, um, our parent conferences are coming up and your classroom teacher can definitely tell you where they placed based on our assessments. We're just finishing up everything here, like Mrs. Cook said, and they'll be starting their small groups on October 18th. We want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. We do have an opportunity for some um, questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and allow participants to unmute themselves. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat box or feel free to unmute. Um, if not, we will be here for a few more minutes. If anybody um, wants to hang out and ask any questions. <laughs> 